If you are in the middle of planning your wedding, then you're probably a little stressed out about your wedding reception timeline. And today we're going to talk about a couple of factors and give you a couple of examples that can help alleviate the stress of that wedding reception and help you have the best night of your life. We've experienced hundreds of weddings in the last couple of years around here at Ozark Mix, thousands of wedding moments, and we've seen some really good and we've seen some really bad moments. And hopefully the experience that we can share with you will help you plan the best night of your life. Why? because you deserve it. You deserve to have the best night of your life. The best wedding that you've ever been to should be your own. And we're here to help you do just that. So let's get into it. I wanna share the wedding timeline template that we give to all of our couples and it really helps them move things forward, keep things efficient, keep energy up, keep attention up and help them have the best night of their life. So there's a couple of factors that we want to um, sort of throw in here. And you know, th we're not gonna talk about ceremony, we're not gonna talk about cocktail hour, we're gonna talk about just the wedding reception right now, okay? So format, you know, it could vary, right? The format of wedding receptions can vary. And so this wedding template hopefully will help you just kind of piece your own together. The first factor that we want to talk about is when are you doing pictures with your family? It's likely that you want to have pictures with all of your guests, people that have come to the wedding, aunts, uncles, friends, those people that are important to you to have your photographer take those photos, it really factors in when you start talking about your wedding reception. So what I mean by that is how long will that take? Are you doing a first look with you as your couple? Are you guys going to see each other prior to the wedding, which is a big time trend right now? There's a lot more first looks going on. What first look will do for you is it'll allow you to take photos right after that first look. You can knock out photos uh, ahead of the wedding ceremony. And then after the wedding ceremony, you basically just take 20 to 30 minutes and you take photos with people who weren't there before the wedding, like Aunt Sally or Grandma or whoever, you know what I'm talking about. So that really has a lot to do with it. And so how long that's gonna take is really gonna factor into your wedding timeline. So you wanna make that decision before you plan this uh, process. And the reason why is you wanna know how long are your guests gonna need to wait on you between the ceremony and the reception. And are you providing a cocktail hour service that will sort of like meet their need to do something next, okay? And so all of the factors that we're gonna talk about when it comes to the reception is your guests wanna know that there's something coming. Dead time is like you lose their attention. And so we're gonna try to help you plan something that's gonna fill those moments to where you're not having a lot of dead time during your reception. So here's how our traditional timeline will work. You as the wedding couple will be introduced to your guests as the wedding party. We've been recommending this lately where you would actually introduce your entire wedding party at the same time. This way, it's just like this huge fanfare and your whole wedding squad runs in and they're just like super excited. The whole crowd is like pumped. And then right after that, we announce you as the couple to come on in and that energy is super high. Now, one thing that we recommend in this process is you pick a song that means something to you that you, you know, you know, if you want energy, then pick something energetic. If you want something elegant, pick something elegant. This is totally up to you. You know, you can search Google and figure out what the best intro music is, but our advice is always pick something that means something to you. So you're going to come in, all this energy will be high. Now, the next thing that we recommend is we always, always, always recommend that you start your first dances right away. Why? 
because it allows the audience and the guests to just focus on you. They've already introed you, they've already focused on you. And so this template is built around you doing your first dances right away. And so what's gonna happen is, is that DJ is gonna introduce you, you're gonna come in, you're gonna get a big fanfare, and then right away that DJ is gonna say, all right, welcome our couple to the dance floor. They're gonna do their first dance right now. And then all eyes are on you and it's just like this beautiful moment. Now, you don't have to do it that way. It's just been sort of our mode of operation over the last couple years to do it that way because that focus is right on you right away. And they're all there to see you anyway. So this is your night. You can celebrate that way or not. Um, and then right after that, we, a lot of times, I would say 80% of the time, we just keep going with those dances. And that would be, we invite dad or mom to the floor to dance with bride, groom, extra bride, whoever we've got with that. We invite them to the floor. And then your next uh, set of folks would be dancing together. Usually it's bride or groom or bride and bride or, you know, bride and dad or bride and mom or bride and sister. Sometimes we have um, loved ones who aren't there. And so someone is really dancing in their place. We call those special someone dances. And so all of those would happen right after that first dance between the wedding couple. And it's just this beautiful moment. It allows people to just like take it all in. All the photos are done. Um, it's just this beautiful moment. And especially, um, this works really well because the photographers and the videographers, if you have those, are already set up for your intro and they're likely around that dance floor area anyway. And so it just really works when they just, you guys just come on in, you do your thing and you, and you go for it right there. Now, the next thing that we always recommend is that right after that, um, we, we start dinner service. And so dinner service for us, um, it depends if you're doing a plated dinner or if you're doing a buffet, dinner can always last between 45 minutes to 55 minutes to an hour. But what you do want to do is during that time, you as the wedding couple want to start making your way around the room after you eat, of course, um, you want to start making your way around the room, do your mingling right then so that all of that is done and you, your, your guests are able able to just enjoy dinner, know that you're going to come to their table, hang out with them, take some photos. Um, you know, at this point, if you've got a photo booth or if you've got some extra entertainment or if you've got a, a you know, your DJ has got this perfect dinner set created for you, that would be the time to do that. You're going to do dinner right after your dances. And then during the end of dinner, what's going to happen is you'll move into cake cutting and here is why. We always recommend if you're gonna do a traditional cake cut to do that right at the end of dinner, the DJ makes that announcement, you go over to the cake, you cut the cake, photos are taken. Why do we do that? Well, the reason why we do that is because during the next part of your reception, that cake can be cut and distributed to your guests. And so what we do right after cake cut is we recommend speeches to happen then. Why? Because it allows you to have some filler space. Your guests know that there's something coming up next and it gives the, the, the folks who are serving your cake enough time to cut that cake, get it ready so that when speeches are done, we go right into eating cake and enjoying dessert. Now, the alternative to that would be you cut your cake, you go into speeches, right after speeches, you do the final or the first dances right then. So you would do your dance or maybe you had done a first dance right when you walked in and then you had a couple of dances to do with your special people like your dad or your mom or whoever is standing in for that special someone uh, who's not at the wedding. And so, that would be just that area that creates this filler in order for you guys to maximize your efficiency, maximize your, you know, downtime, not being too high. Because the worst thing that we've found during weddings is when people begin to get 
sort of antsy is when there's a lot of downtime. When there's there's you know an hour and a half goes by and you guys are still mingling or you're eating or there, there's just a lot of that. So you want to try to limit that downtime to as least amount of possible. So dinner should last 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the service of the dinner. If it's a buffet or if it's plated dinner that's being served. So we always recommend cake cut. Let that cake get served while you're doing speeches and right after speeches we say we open up the dance floor and we party and so you know um a lot of people ask us like how, how long should we give russ for uh, our wedding dances like how long should the dance party be and for me to be completely honest with you and i love you have to understand i love music and i love when people are dancing and i love mixing at a wedding like it's all i do i do it you know 60 times a year hours on hours of doing it and it, it never gets old but what i have found is the dance set that's about an hour and 45 minutes to two and a half hours is absolutely perfect why because we can scroll we can roll we can quick mix we can we can mix a bunch of stuff that is sort of like all ages and all demographic at the beginning then we sort of get into like a hyper you know hype music or whatever you know you've curated as your you know the, the songs that you want to hear and then at the end it's getting crazy especially if there's alcohol like it just kind of gets crazy towards the end and so there's the cutoff time is really good so like i just like to have like an hour 45 to two hours that's like the perfect uh wedding mix time for me um sometimes that hour and a half sort of throws in there and, and that works really well because again you're just moving through songs and things stay energetic and they stay up the thing is is like a lot of people want this really long drawn out um dance party and i, I love that in theory but in all actuality, as a wedding DJ, it's really hard. It's hard to pull off people's attention for that long. So what I would recommend in that regard is if you want the party to continue, then maybe you set yourself up and you do a shorter dance set, say an hour and a half dance set at the traditional reception, and then you plan an after party somewhere else, and that DJ or another DJ team goes and does that for you, and you just dance the night away there. That allows all those guests to really get what they came for and that is like that just solid wedding dance set and then if they want to join you at the after party you've planned then they can go do that and y'all can get crazy so those are things that i i recommend when it comes to your wedding reception and then finally what we've just seen really be beautiful moments are these final dances that couples are beginning to do by themselves in the venue by themselves and we usher everybody out for like a sparkler exit or, you know, they're getting into a, a car and it's just these beautiful, intimate moments of the couple gets to just breathe before they go and exit. They do a dance together. Uh, the photographer sometimes stays or videographer. The DJ actually is and on our team. We, we hit the music and we leave. Um, and I've seen videos afterwards and they're just beautiful moments like just incredible. So I love that. I love the idea of just, you know, finishing the night with a special dance yourself and then you exit to all your friends and family and they put you in the getaway car and you're out the door. And that is your reception. And so a lot of times that, that could take anywhere between four and a half to five hours for us. The average amount of time that we're spending in the reception is about four hours. And that is, you know, from, from introing you to dinner, to the exit, it's just the perfect amount of time, at least for us in our experience that we've seen. And so I do know that in different parts of the country, there are different norms and it really depends on all the traditional things that you're going to do. Maybe if you're going to do bouquet toss or if you're going to do garter toss, um, those are things that you want to factor into to reducing downtime as well. So hopefully this video has served you well. We've got a bunch of videos on uh, on our reception playlist. I'd love for you to check those out. We'll see you in the next video. You can plan the wedding of your life and we want to help you do that. So here we go.